is Steve Weber. I'm here with my friend uh, Jan Porinchak. That's right. We're in the Nessequag River State Park today, and uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to explore the park. If you enjoy the outdoors, this is a great place to visit. And one of the reasons is because there's so many different ecosystems within a small area. You have freshwater wetlands, you have brackish water estuaries, you've got woodlands, and through the trails in the woods, you've got uh, the beaches. Uh, of the uh, Nissaquag River leading out into the Long Island Sound. So there's a lot to explore here. I just want to point out some of these flowers here. These are called Queen Anne's Lace. And they really do have a lacy appearance. Very pretty flower. It happens not to be native to North America, but it doesn't damage the ecosystem. And it's very pretty to look at, and it's common here at the park. I believe they're from Europe originally. There's a lot of species uh, that are not native to this area that have been introduced from Europe uh, as well as from Asia. And we're going to see some of those as well as some of the native species. For instance, right here uh, you have mulberry. And that's a tree that isn't native, but it does provide a lot of berries, fruit that uh, birds do enjoy eating. So it's actually pretty beneficial to wildlife. Every now and then as you're walking along the trail, if you know what to look for, you might find some tasty treats. These are wine berries. That's a type of raspberry. And again, it's a good source of food for wildlife and some people who enjoy the wildlife. But just make sure you know what you're eating before you pick one of these and eat them. Pretty good. Need a lot more to make pie, though. An interesting way to see what wildlife is up to is to look along muddy banks along streams like this. And you can see a lot of different types of animals have been here utilizing this stream. As small as that this stream is, it's very important to wildlife. You have raccoon tracks, of course, they're pretty common. There's a lot of different bird tracks. And it looks like here we have deer tracks. And uh, deer are pretty recent arrivals to uh, western Suffolk, where we are. Of course, they were here historically, but then when uh, the county was developed, they were pushed out east, but now as uh, parks like this have come into being and provide uh, shelter for them, uh, the deer are making use of the parks and they're moving back into this area and you see evidence right here. It's a common wetlands, freshwater wetlands plant. It's called duckweed. It looks like miniature lily pads. The roots hang underneath, just like a tiny miniature Lilliputian lily pad. Steve just got a really nice shot of the black-crowned uh, night heron, uh, just one of the birds that enjoys uh, prowling around wetlands like this for food, and they also roost here during the day, and. They also uh, have their nests here uh, during the summer months. So again, a really uh, great spot to come and view some of the uh, bird life that's at the Nisquag River State Park. It's a eastern cottontail rabbit, and they're very plentiful at the park. And they wouldn't be here if conditions weren't right for them. There's plenty of grass, as you can see, and a lot of edge habitat. That means it's a place where two different habitats meet. In this case, uh, these woods next to the pond in a mowed area like this. And there's a lot of animals that thrive in a habitat like that where two different ecosystems meet. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of different ecosystems here close together. So animals like this cottontail rabbit find this a great place to live. Animals have uh, no fear in this park other than their natural predators like the red-tailed hawks that are here and maybe the great horned owls. 
He's a young rabbit, though. He'll have to learn a few tricks, like uh, how to hop out of the way in case there's any danger. But there's no danger from us people. 